<laughs> Is that enough smiling? Well, I'm smiling. I think so. Can, can yeah. I stop smiling now? Yeah. No, Roy, <laughs> keep smiling. You got this. Okay. Oh, this rip, I this feel like I need to say Gakala gear. Jesus, it looks <laughs> painful down there in the bottom corner with Rory. <laughs> anyway, yeah, good yeah. evening. <laughs> we get to say, Yoss gets to say good evening before any of us do. Um, well, failing the test. It's Wednesday. It's 7 o'clock. It is the Hub Games team talk extravaganza with <laughs> Rory Yeah. And... Karen, um, <laughs> I, I, I thought you'd have got the got the thing where it's like I introduce Rory, and then Rory would introduce somebody else. Oh, well, oh, okay. Yeah, I definitely should have talked about that before. Yeah, we, hey, it's Wednesday Karina. with with Rory and Aaron <laughs> and Michael. <laughs> it is Wednesday, Day six hundred and fifty-five. <laughs> It's been Where's 84 years. <laughs> yes. Hello, everybody. How are you? My my good friends. My good internet <laughs> friends. This is no longer real life. This is just virtual now. Oh, man, no. Yeah, no one else exists, Michael, apart from us and yours. Erin, and then... Erin the ghost in the bones <laughs> of the house. The bones of the house. <laughs> Hey, Delton's there. Hello, Delton. Off of the wonderful Malt House Games. Uh, lovely to, uh, to have you with us. Um, yeah, how are people? Is everyone okay? Rory, are you okay? Um, I was sending an email to someone and going, it's been full of highs and lows. <clears throat> like, we've six people in the house, so we all go through different times of when people are up and down and needing company and needing time on their own. And then... You know, the last week with, well, two months with the Prism Arena Kickstarter has been a bit of a, a roller coaster as well, which we'll be talking about soon. But yeah, so that's, I'm kind of hitting it a chiller place now. Good. Erin, how about you? How, how, how is stuff in, in the room next door to me? <laughs> it's fantastic. It's like my own little domain. I'm happy. <laughs> I like how how two of us on this stream have um, stuffed toys from Root in shot at the point at this point because <laughs> I've got violent mouse and you. Yeah, have I've got oh. violent no violent raccoon. <laughs> yes. Think of it like a mirror. It's like it works. I, but I constantly like I have no idea what's going on. I just immediately got... move the hand that I think is going to work. And so uh -huh. I have taco cat. Does taco cat count? Taco, taco cat, cat works. Counts. Taco cat is a special expansion for Root. The um, <laughs> The animals, yeah, that's all good. Uh, Karina, how have is real cat. you have real Sorry. cat? I have real cat as well. So, not don't think that you're all that just because you've got a real cat in shot. I've got one that admittedly does look like roadkill, but is <laughs> I can assure you she's still alive. Well, it's not like mine is super active, man. It's not like I don't even know if you can see, she just no, she's can... been there for like half a day. I should pay my kids to just come and stand in the background. I go, Look, <laughs> kids. Just really uncomfortably, <laughs> just shuffling back and forth. <laughs> Bad, can we leave now? Yeah. yeah Especially like right with this amount of space behind, they just feel like standing behind, looming over me. Dad, can I go? Can I go? Dad, no, not till it's done. Can I go? But Karina, are you are you okay? Um, I am as okay as I can be, being stuck, literally confined in a house. Um, without being able to go outside and being an extreme extrovert. That's the best I can tell you. I'm doing as well as I can in the circumstances. That is true because, you know, as extroverts, we would get a a, uh, a recharge from, I don't know, maybe attending conventions, which is the other thing we're going to be talking about on today's show. See, it's not just all thrown together at the last minute. It's oh, no. At the last minute. <laughs> I don't know. We'll get there. Strategically planned. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, all right. Let's talk about the last week then, because yeah, as Rory said, that was uh, that was a roller coaster and a half. No, <laughs> so like, it's not quite a half of a roller coaster. <laughs> like that's the that's the worst bit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah so, and I hate roller coasters. <clears throat> Normally, so, I like happened, roller right? coasters. What happened? We're Me too. About, this okay, one, we're not, no, though. We're talking about roller coasters now. We're moving on. Mm -hmm. we're so talking about stuff. 
we launched uh, the Prison Arena Kickstarter just over a week ago. Mm. And uh, on Kickstarter, <clears throat> which was kind of um, a different thing for us because we had been planning the game for retail and really targeting a family-friendly audience with the game. And kind of we're trying to do a couple of things with Kickstarter. Like we weren't going to have stretch goals. Um, we had a kind of definite delivery date for the game as well and had it at a very affordable price for people. Um, and kind of quite frankly, the tumble we we kind of blew through um, at the start of the Kickstarter, um, which was partly a concern because of that reaction uh, which is interesting compared to what the kind of re reviewer response was to the the game. Um, so I think it, there was a period of kind of worry about the game, um, contrasted with knowing it was destined for for retail. So it was kind of then really exciting to hear from Asmodee in North America um, that they were really going to get behind the game and support it and our plans for the kind of retail play aspect of the game. As you know, we've been planning, you know, a really cool launch kit to go with the game that retailers would have. And so for people who didn't even own the copy of the game would be able to come and play and, and get started and discover it. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of weird because it was that first. I think we all had that feeling at the beginning of like, what the heck is going on here? Um, followed by, I suppose, excitement, relief, confirmation that Prison Arena was really destined for retail. That's kind of yeah. where we had designed it for. And I think that's kind of brought up a really interesting thing for me about, again, the nature of Kickstarter and what people look for in that that space. So it's a huge yep. confirmation, I think, of for me, the kind of Kickstarter audience as well. And the difference, I think, in some of our games uh, you know what's suitable for Kickstarter or not. Mm. So, what about the rest of you guys? Like, what were your feelings last week? I wouldn't compare it to a roller Let's move on. I know. So, like, okay. So, um, if we're going to continue on the theme park analogy, because Christ, I miss theme parks. Um, I love theme parks; they're great. Um, do you ever go on a Tower of Terror where it's sort of like it? it just, it's literally it just goes up. Nice and slowly, nice and smoothly, and then all of a sudden it's just sort of like <laughs> it just drops you like a stone. Um, that's how it felt. I like there was this, there was like because this has not just been like seven weeks or whatever, it's been two years pretty much in company of mm -hmm. of like building up and building up and working to make it the best that it can be, and just like optimism and hard work and everything's going to be cool. And then it was just sort of like. And it's like, but this game is really good. And it's like, I, I did a lot of shouting at the computer. Um, and it was like, <clears throat> but the fact that it is still going to happen delights me no end. Um, because, I mean, yeah, we've, we've said it on the, um, on, on the show and we've said it in posts a lot. Um, it's, it's not like arena battle games are not a thing that I generally enjoy. Mm -hmm. But Prism Arena, I do like because I I don't have a huge barrier to entry. You know, it, it, I I'm like the five year old in this situation. You know, y'all are the adults, and I can sort of play on a level playing field against all of you because the game is so well put together. It's it's yeah. I'm glad it, I'm glad it's still coming, and I hope that everybody else is is really excited for it as well so it's cool i think it's an interesting thing that <clears throat> it's a weird phrase and you know me i i kind of i usually hold my tongue uh, i think success on kickstarter isn't a measure of quality because <laughs> I, I know what the reaction is to the likes of of prison Marine and other games that have failed to kind of hit the mark um for whatever reason and i think that's a general thing i think within board, every industry because i'm a big comic book fan as well but there's like really quality titles that you just look at them and go i don't know how that was 
missed or overlooked. And that's with so many games coming out these days, that's being kind of amplified more as well, I think. So that's, that's my one kind of... Yeah, I, do. I, I, think you're enti- I think you're entitled to that point because it, it this isn't like a a bitterness sort of thing for you. It's just sort of like, nah, it didn't work. It's mm-hmm. just... It, it That's not how Kickstarter is a thing. Um, Karina, what about you? What's your 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 views and thoughts? Um, well, I won't lie. Clearly, like we, we put a lot of work in it, so there is there is that kind of frustration and disappointment. But realistically, what matters at the end of the day is that we still get to make the game and we still get to, you know, put it in in stores and get it in people's hands and have an amazing organized play program to support it and and you know get people to love it as much as we do. And I know that sounds completely like a marketing line, so yes. But nonetheless, it, it is legit because realistically, that's why we make games, right? To get it to people, to get the games in people's hands, on people's tables, to get them playing. And that's still happening. So at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still really, really proud and excited. And that's all that matters. And again, it, you know, we've had that conversation before about Hub Games and what it is and what it stands for. And I think, again, we we kind of say, hey, we're going here. You know, we've got an idea and we're headed in this direction. Do you want to come with us? Um, and that's very much our approach, not, hmm, what do we think you'll like? And then, you know, just make that game. We're, we're trying to create uh, games for people who maybe aren't being, are being underserved at the moment. That's it. I was trying to think, like, about Hub Games and what it is. And it's, you know, we have trying to... Like, finally come up with a definition for the nebulous, what is Hub Games? That. It's like we design <laughs> games for, yeah, those who are underserved by the current games um out there um because if you look at all of our titles they're all quite different and even with um flip over frog and you know our secret upcoming titles um they're all designed to kind of do something a little bit different and Mm. and kind of bend genres or mechanics in some new and interesting ways so serving the underserved (laughs) that'll be like (laughs) our (laughs) t-shirts Um, I do have to. I have. I've noticed that Peter is here from uh, Slovakia. We got to give him a shout out. What up, Peter? Hello. Hey, Peter. Hello. Sorry, we won't see you at Essen. Yeah, Peter. I do watch some of your um, your live streams, but my Slovakian is terrible, so uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. I just got to hear your dulcet tones. <laughs> if you could just throw the occasional English language sentence in there once in yeah. a while just to appease Rory. Then well, I did fine. get a shout out the last time I was on, on the stream, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> That's good. Erin, how, how's your, your feelings? I, I think because um, I see Michael uh, in the comments, not you, referred to it as Tower of Terror. So I do feel like it's that where you go up and up and up and up and you're like, oh boy and then it's just screaming and then the doors open and you're like hey at the end <laughs> we survived Yay! i thought like... i was gonna die in one of those man like i, I don't even want us to joke about this anymore <laughs> i did one it was in the dark so you were inside it was in the dark this was in in germany at fantasia Land in germany and it's in the dark so it's already you walk in this dark kind of foggy misty thing and they put you in this chair you can't see anything and then you go up and then it can kind of does the droppy thingy up and down i thought i was going to die it was the first thing i did that morning i was so happy i hadn't had breakfast i just it's not a good analogy for me <laughs> so what about when they combine that with a roller coaster um like the old scooby-doo coaster at uh, dream world in, no universal in australia's gold coast that's really good (laughs) and not terrifying the first time you write it um so yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a thing um prisma arena is still coming which is great um the what what are we officially calling it it's not we're not we're not calling it organized play we're calling it community community play play. Yeah. yeah and part of the plan is to schedule it around school holidays <clears throat> as well to make most of the opportunity for younger players to come along and drag their parents along and like we said you know people who are at, at college level or adults they can work around that schedule but we're really trying to make it accessible for families to come and be able to yep. participate and get all the cool goodies that they'll get because it's like we were joking all of our stretch goals were going into organized play yeah and that, that's what we're kind of saving them for 
Um, school holidays. Be really, really cool. Yeah. yeah, what do they call it in the States? You know the way we've got like half term and is it still the same or is it a different term? It's still, yeah, just spring like holidays break. and then, yeah, spring break or summer break. You don't have Halloween. Like, that's just odd. I mean, you, oh, you mean as a whole, I was like, we do have Halloween. I don't know what you're talking about, but no, and like not off for school. <laughs> like, yeah, free, don't worry, free. we don't we officially have, have holiday for Halloween. Like, it's not like a public holiday of it. It's just like, in oh, Ireland it is. Know. Is it? Uh, no, technically Halloween isn't. It's All Saints Day the next day. But that's not the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> you know, Ireland is a thinly veiled pagan culture. You know, with still deep roots into Celtic mysticism. Of course, we're going to celebrate it. All right, that seems fair. That seems fair. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, we should probably <laughs> kick somebody out of the chat because that got really yeah. confusing. <laughs> anyway, let us move on. My uh, so yeah, keep an eye Started. out for um, all the stuff on Prism Arena. <laughs> Uh, which will be releasing in the autumn or mm. the fall, if you are American. Yes. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing you know big shouts for it. We'll be um, putting some videos up over the next few weeks as well of plays. Because um, Erin, I need to corral you into doing some live play stuff with me so we can well, film it. So I was thinking, and this, um, and I know we talk all day, but um, I was thinking about whether we should organize like a Prism Arena tournament. Oh, God. on like tabletop simulator or something like that <laughs> for people to just have some fun with because it'd be a chance for yeah. people to kind of experience the game and level up digitally <laughs> before the game hits the stores Do like a I knockout get to fight people not that yeah. i'm asking but yeah we, we could be like the you know the level four guardians um and so we're like the elders and we're gonna oh I was thinking them. I was going to be the boss fight. I'm like, yes, finally. Oh, we can be, yeah. <laughs> Apart from like they beat you on the first turn and you're like, oh, no, oh, crap. <laughs> See, I, I know that Aaron has been watching um, the Karate Kid TV series spin off of Cobra Kai. So I'm fighting, buy tournaments a Cobra Kai is, yeah. <laughs> fighting tournaments is now very much up on Aaron's, yeah. Aaron's list. <laughs> Actually, I was watching that while I was working on Prism Arena because that came it's out. It's really Atlanta? good. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I think Rory's the end boss. It's either, Rory it's either you or John. <laughs> I think we'd have no, to be no, like no, no. we'd have to be like the twins in um Double Dragon. Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yes. You face off against myself and John. Is it I'll just be the T.O. I'll be the T.O. Hmm? What? Is it the Kataragi twins? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Summoning it giant guys... digital so, dragon. Um, you guys can fight for all the cool things like end boss and anything else. I'll just be the yeah. tournament organizer. I'm very comfortable in that role. Oh, I will assume that role I'm, and run I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep saying that like every now and again. Anyone fancy a tournament? Anyone fancy a tournament until enough people fight and then we'll we'll host one. <clears throat> so, yeah, we, please we make don't my need dreams like come true of being at least the starter boss. Just hmm? saying. We don't need universe. eight people. I know, and oh don't we have like a preview copy of the game lying around somewhere? Oh, we do. We do, don't we? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe we could have play for that then. Oh, that could be cool. Yeah, and then so it ends up what... you win. <laughs> Pardon? Then it ends up that Rory wins. And it's just sort of like, yeah. ah. Well, I have to because I can't we can't afford to give it away. It's <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, in those TV shows where you fake the, the competition so you're trying to win yourself. <laughs> Uh, so basically what we're saying here is if you're interested in, in taking part in a, an actual tournament for Prisma Arena, then message us and on, we'll keep and you posted. We could actually, because I have to do this, is we could do it on Tabletopia so that you don't even need to invest in Tabletop Simulator. Yeah. So we could actually do that. So yeah. that's so that'll be my us. motivation to get it done. Message us or me or whoever from here you know. Just message someone out of these four people or the Hub Games page, either on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or wherever you wish. Just get the information to us and we'll keep you posted and uh, make a thing happen mm -hmm. if we have enough people. So Sounds good. So kind of tying in the conversation that we're going to have about like um, cons, uh, this was the weekend we were going to launch Adventure Mart. Mm -hmm. um, yep. It was designed by the Digi Spike team. 
that we actually discovered at uh, UK Games Expo last year. Now, funny uh, you say that, because behind you there, I see a box. Oh, like this <laughs> one. Look at stand Ooh, up. Good eye, good eye. Yeah, I was just waiting for everything to fall down. So this is Adventure Mart. Um, yeah, so it's a game where, for those who don't know, you are the managers of your own Adventure Mart convenience store. And the objective is over five days, um, basically earn as much money for your draconic overlords um, before you get sent back to the abyss for further training. Um, the thing that kind of sold me on it was, first thing was the art when I was walking around the UK Games Expo, um, but also uh, just the really, inter it's a deck builder, but it's got like really interactive gameplay where you're not only kind of buying stock into your hand and you get to use it on the turn that you buy it, which was one of those like, huh, of course, that makes so much sense. Um, you have uh, essentially these kind of mini games where you're trying to outsell each other and win over customers. And I just love how heated and underhanded it can get. It's true. Um, and I think the more we worked on it as we were kind of developing it, just seeing some of the card interactions. And like, I think you, I, you know, it's been a while since we've played together, but I have like my favorite interaction um, involving, uh, oh, I'm trouble with names. The guy who allows you to pull back a customer and uh, resell to them. Yeah. So I, I played the trick um, yeah. on you. Samuel Poots. Samuel Poots. Yes. Yes. Uh, where at the end of the round, where everyone's got, have you got any last actions to take? And it's meant to be like a cleanup phase. And then I play Samuel and he goes, oh, yeah, look. And he steals your customer and you get to sell to him. Apart from in my case, it always backs, backfires and someone wins the customer back and earns twice the money from them and i'm even worse off afterwards but there was one time it worked majestically uh now saying that it's a deck builder i, I we wouldn't compare it to like a deck builder like dominion or tanakori like that mm -hmm. where you start off with a small deck of cards and you end up with this amount of cards um i i would say it's kind of a it's 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 a slow deck builder like you you only add a few cards into it. it's more like a curation element you sort of like, you know, you 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 get rid of a little bit of trash, you bring in some really good stuff, you hire members of staff, you get fixtures to put into your store, that kind of thing. Well, it's, it's, it's cool. It's very good. I really like that element of um, that you've got kind of like your shop floor and you're like, mm. oh, well, I'll put this fixture in and I'll hire this person. And then like that you're trying to improve the stock that you have in the store. So essentially you want to keep a really tight selection, um, and, but you're just trying to, kind of get rid of the crappy stuff that Adventure Mart started you off with. I mean, I'm not going to make any money from this stuff. And trying to like, you know, go to HQ and find better items to sell. Um, <clears throat> what I really love the intuitiveness of it, like the, because everything works within the concept of running like your store buying and selling and, and things like that. Um, uh, so so yeah. Michael says engine building. I mean, there's a little bit of that, a tiny bit, I guess. You can get some cards to combo off with other cards. Um, but really, the, the thing I really like about it is the, uh, the, the, the sale mechanic when an adventurer wanders into town and you're all... I, I always describe it as you have your different stores on like the crossroads of, uh, of the center of town and then a poor, unfortunate adventurer... Intersection into for the those who live in the U.S. That's the one. Uh, and then we, we sort of like sniff blood and we all fling our doors open at the same time and just start roaring at this poor adventurer to come and buy stuff from us and just sort of like just stacking cards upon cards upon cards. They're like, buy this one, buy this one. It's like, um, you know, the, the Discworld books? There's that one character, uh, Cut Me Own Throat Dibbler. It's just sort of like, I'll give you this, I'll give you this, I'll give you this, and you only have to give me five gold, mate. It'll be lovely. Come on, it's a bargain. Hmm. And then Rory steps in and goes, I'll give you even more. And for four, it's fine. <laughs> it's like... um, so, yeah, Karina and Aaron, you know, Aaron, you've probably been playing it longer as part of the testing and development. And Karina, it's a fairly recent discovery for you. Um, yeah. So, I will tie this into kind of why we started talking about it. It is coming this month. So, in the US, it's going to launch on June 19th, according. Um, through Asmodee USA. 
-hmm. and we're just firming up the UK release date. And that'll be going out hopefully in the next day or two um, for people and they'll be able to start pre-ordering it as well. Yep, yep. So what do you guys- We'll have more information about? next week though. So come back yep. next week, Wednesday. We'll mm -hmm. have more information then so we can kind of point you to, uh, you know, in the right direction when it comes to pre-ordering and all those bits and pieces. Um, and but yeah. Try and actually get some of the DigiSprite team on as well to have a chat. That would be very cool. Oh, that would be awesome. It would be really cool. I've not met them yet, so that would be really cool. You're saying that there's cool three of them and four of us, and we can only have six people on stream at a given time. So who is Fight. going to fall? <laughs> <laughs> I'm we can, we can. You get stuck out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what do you guys, what, what have you enjoyed about the game? Okay, so I'll say for myself, and I think it's safe because none of my brothers are here because this is what I was doing when I was playing with them last time is you push them to like bid over this one customer like more and more and more and you know they're thinking about putting down that card and you're like if I can get them to put down the card and they do and then you're like I'm good and you pull everything back <laughs> yeah. and there's this moment where you can hear the horror in their voice they're like no she goaded me into it again and you can do that with them about like three times <laughs> yeah excellent it's just, it's fun because I enjoy that kind of bluffing mechanic when you're playing with a game. And it's got, it's because of that auctioning or uh, sale part of the game, mm -hmm. I have that bluff mechanic. So I've got like my deck builder and my bluffing. Yeah, we were talking, I think last week about, um, was last week or online about games that where you have to bluff. And like, I'm terrible at games like Resistance um, or kind of Werewolf. I, I just change color the whole time when I'm playing. But I love Adventure Mark because it's totally about like just playing with the cards in your hand and making very simple decisions. And I, I love those bluffing elements of, you know, the character. Um, <clears throat> she allows you to basically see all of the customers for the day. Oh, the Augur of the Isles. Oh, uh, yes, uh -huh. the Augur of the Isles. Yeah. And so you look at them, and then you put them back, and then you reveal like a crappy card, you know, like a, a small. A, fighter um and everyone's like hmm is that the best card in there or no 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 they're basically holding back on the better card for later in the day and then i think you did an errand once where you're like no actually all of the cards were terrible <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um and i just i love that aspect of the the gameplay there's so much yeah there's so much conversation that's and one of the things we look for in our games is that kind of player yeah. interaction. And for me, that's what sets it apart from traditional deck builders where you're kind of focused on your kind of your engine playing. This is very much there's elements of bluffing the other players and the kind of smack talk that happens as well while you're playing, which is pretty cool. Sorry, I cut across to you, Karina. Just that's quite okay. <laughs> okay I'm, I'm buying you time, really. I see, I see. No, mine will be really, really short, really simple. Um, so I've only played the game on Tabletop um, Simulator with you guys. Um, and whenever you taught it to me, I thought, oh, this is so cute. This will be so lovely. And it is cute. It is adorable. It is my type of, I'll be super girly on this one. It is the cutest thing ever. I bought cards just because they were cute. And I'm like, I must have this. <laughs> the value is so high, just cuteness of card. Um, but realistically, it is spiteful. It is amazing. You can be really mean in the game if you want to. So if you have that kind of really good combo of people who can, you know, handle the kind of spite play, it is the best thing. It was so good. I, I have a couple of people I'm really looking forward to showing it to. Won't lie. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Is, is this like there's people in your life you want to have revenge on? <laughs> Are you like, hey, let's play this cute game. <laughs> no, they're people I love, and I love playing spiteful games mm. with. That's that's like our dynamic. That's the thing. <laughs> It'll be epic. It'll be glorious. Mm. I'm kind of. I know there's a lot of people who've played it who are really excited to get their hands on it. I think there's the early backers for it as well are really excited. Um, and again, it kind of brings us back around to cons. Like um, we've got Origins coming up, and that's one we're hoping to be able to demo the game at. As well. As a matter of fact, Whoa, one, look at that. Uh, is Hub Games going to be Origins Online? That's certainly the plan. Um, if I get my act together, Daniel, yes. <laughs> I need to sort out the paperwork. Because, yeah, the plan is um, obviously, we were going to be going to a lot of shows over the summer. Um, <laughs> was meant to be UK Games Expo this week. Karina, no crying. 
I'll do my best. I put uh, on makeup especially to, to not, you know, like, this is the barrier. Do not cry. Yeah, don't cry. Like, All right. Uh, yeah, so we were going to be doing that. We were doing uh, Origins Online. Um, we'll be doing Gen Con Online uh, because, of course, we were meant to be going for that as well. Uh, we'll be doing Spiel Digital, whatever that is, because a lot of this stuff is still kind of nebulous and yeah. up in the air um so we're waiting for as much confirmation from organizers as everybody else is but once well, they come through we'll be you know we'll be all in mm -hmm. and i mean we've the way i think about it is we've been running our own mini con like we the, the if you think about it when we first heard about the lockdown we basically threw everything into our digital tour bus and yeah. like and hit the road with the virtual tour um before people were talking about digital cons um, and that kind of got <laughs> literally, literally we parked the bus in the run up to the prison arena Kickstarter. But now I think we'll be kind of putting fresh air in, into the tires and hitting the road again, uh, visiting stores as they start to open up. Cause I think that was part of the challenge. Just, just as we were starting the digital tour, they were all dealing with furloughing staff and, and closing. So there wasn't much headspace yes. for the offering we had um but the plan would be to kind of reconnect with people and be able to offer the virtual tour to them and their customers um over the next Very month much. as well uh daniel says uh, i love that as i picked up uh prison marina by the way i think this game needs to exist mm -hmm. so super happy for you all bless you so and so what, what daniel has proven is if you just say something nice to us in the comments it's gonna get highlighted <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this weekend was, of course, meant to be UK Games Expo. Um, I remember we were like, so we were planning what can we do. So you, we were all going to go over in your minibus, Rory. So yes. Rory got a new oh, minibus. So we would have been driving. Actually, we both, probably a Volkswagen been, camper van. Yeah, yeah, we'd have been over there probably now. We, we probably would have arrived by now, completely yeah. like exhausted. Today's <laughs> Wednesday. Oh no. Yeah, because it's the, re uh, the retailer day would have been tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah. we would have been setting up tomorrow at the same time as doing the retailer day. Mm -hmm. um, I had plans for us to all have like Adventure Mart aprons. Yeah. Um, so we're going we to have to wait. Like, yeah, we'll do it sometime, I hope, because I really like that idea. And I wanted little small bottles of Tango or Fanta just relabeled with like Adventure Mart health potions. And anybody who did a demo and won would get a would get a, an adventure mark health push. <laughs> uh, Karina, I just want to point out there's two comments there that need to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to make sure that I, I didn't it. distract people from what Michael yeah. was saying. I felt like what Michael was saying was really okay. important. So I, I waited really nicely because normally I jump and interrupt people. No, I waited. I, there was breathing involved. I counted and everything, and there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm, I'm generally the one who reads out all of the comments, but I know that the next half an hour is basically going to be a, a fight of like people putting stuff no, up. But uh, yes. Delton, Delton has a great one. Yeah, uh, yeah if this is the light laugh and you don't know if Rory is fully. Rory, uh, can you confirm that you are actually wearing trousers this time? Yes. Just yes. yes. Regardless of the answer, yeah. just say yes, please. Yeah. I was gonna say usually I just go immediately for my my lawyer says I don't have to answer these questions. That, that was worth every penny. Mm -hmm. oh, that it was is so true. Good. <laughs> um, so um, conventions are a big part of all of our lives. Um, yeah. They're also totally draining and exhausting, um, but we love them still. Um, <laughs> What what's your favorite things about conventions, um, Karina? Let's kick off with you because obviously, your 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 convention experience is generally a little bit different to ours, I would imagine. Um, probably, perhaps, maybe, maybe, maybe a bit depends. But yes, maybe a bit. Um, I will start with answering the question. My favorite thing about conventions, by far, is the people. That's it. And I'm pretty sure this will be an answer. It'll kind of come it back. Tastes so much better at cons than they do <laughs> like Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just gonna to leave like now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, friend. Yeah. Well, that's Karina sorted. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I won't interrupt you again. <laughs> I just need to breathe. <clears throat> okay. 
I'm back. Post breathing, all is good. Um, so yes, definitely people. I hug people. I don't eat people. <laughs> which is like, I keep having to have these disclaimers, Rory. Like every live, I have some sort of disclaimer. Last week, I said when I hug people, I don't throw them around the room. <laughs> this week, it's I don't eat people. I just hug them. Um, I mean, Zaya almost licks them, so, you know. I saw the comment. I wasn't sure if I should put it on the screen or not. <laughs> but now I have to, because there we go. We mentioned it, so I need to be there. So there we go. But it's true, he cannot do that because we're social distancing currently, so you can't lick someone's face. Well, he must be really suffering, apart. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so there we go. Um... <laughs> Now I'm putting all the other comments because there mm -hmm. we go. But realistically, um, it's definitely, it's definitely, definitely the people. It's um, seeing people, hugging people, chatting with people, interacting in any way uh, possible. It, it, there's a very big difference, and this is something we're going to cover. If you go at a convention as a, an exhibitor or if you go as an attendee, right, there's, they're worlds apart. But regardless of how, what I go for as, it's always... The people I get to see um, and that's kind of that makes it the best thing I won't lie I primarily work in organized play normally so for me it's the sound of the convention as well it's uh, judge calls it's um, yeah I think I need to stop talking <laughs> but it's um, it's that kind of general general feeling of being in a room with like-minded people who are there for the exact same reason and they're there for literally to enjoy the same things I enjoy it. And it's just, uh, yeah, I really miss conventions, man. Like, I don't know if this is coming across, but I legitimately really, really miss conventions. <laughs> Tiny bit. <laughs> no, um, I was just doing, I squish your head. Yeah. Who are you, the kids in the hall? <laughs> um, I excuse so, my kids, though. Oh, yeah. That, uh, kids in the, if you're not seeing it, go watch Kids in the Hall. It's very, very good. Like, mm -hmm and genuinely very weird. Um, so Rory, your your convention experience has sort of moved from really hugely focused on story cubes for the longest time mm -hmm. and then sort of like changed over to to hub games. So what's what 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 are shows like for you? What what's your what's 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 your general sort of like convention? They started like? as being terrifying. <clears throat> like by default I am quite a shy reserved person so and especially going with like a game you really care and are passionate about and no one else really kind of knows about mm. um, you know trying to present that to people is really scary um, so like I have I did some events which would have been trade shows like uh, Nuremberg and the education show in the UK but Essen was like my first proper game con and going over, um, I actually, as a kind of, it's weird, as a player, my first experience was I got to play Dominion, which had been out for a couple of years, and I had kind of dismissed, and I'm terrible, like, if I kind of don't jump on something straight away, I'm like, oh, I can't be that good. And then I sat down and played Dominion with a bunch of people, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and totally kind of fell in love with it. Um, but I still remember, actually, talking to the uh, BGG crowd there. And this was when Dirk used to be with them. And he bumped into me on the Sunday morning and was like, Rory, are you, are you in a need of free? We've got an open slot and we need to fill it. Would you be okay with like jumping on? And basically we jumped on and that was one of the ways I think Rory Story Cube's got a big boost into the kind of gamer side of things. Because uh, we've been attending got a New York Toy Fair from the that game space um so cons for me have been very much work but some of my kind of lifelong friends like peter and you know daniel are people that i've met through cons and for me a con is this weird mix of work with friends kind of thing mm -hmm. like we're doing business and we have to talk business but we kind of get that out of the way so we can actually then chat and catch up with each other yeah. um and i was thinking like these days, what I really love is kind of seeing new stuff and discovering gems at a show and getting to impart some of my experience to those who are willing to listen. <laughs> it's a weird thing. But like I hear it back from other people. If if I see a game that I really like, I'll try and figure out a way to help that that person. 
and you know and if they're ho- open to hearing it and i usually get fairly positive feedback on the back of that so it's it feels good to be able to help others in a way that i was helped starting out because <clears throat> i had people who helped me with things and i'm like why on earth are you doing this and they were just saying well i'm just paying it forward so my view is always at cons is to try and pay it forward as well i totally i totally agree with that that's a good way of doing it and it's, it's the nature of sorry to interrupt it's the nature of our industry and the community it's they're the friendliest people ever and the nicest thing is to have a conversation with someone and then you get dragged in a different hall going like you need to meet this person right now <laughs> this is the best thing ever and you make those connections because realistically you met all of us at various conventions right am i correct saying that pretty much or yeah i think yeah. so <clears throat> there we go um but i do michael i think we've both lamented like <laughs> we're going we just want to go to a con as a guest like as an attendee yeah and play some games because it has, it has been a hot minute <laughs> i've always because you're always on like that's the thing though i lo- i love when i get to just be a player because at my heart a lot of this business is just so i can keep playing games and have an excuse yeah. to keep doing it um so having i think we tried to make a point when we're at cons to try and slip away and play some games and and be a gamer which is Really nice. Never as long as you want, but it's nice when you get to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm super jealous. That never happens to me. <laughs> yeah, me neither. You're with the wrong company. <laughs> I mean, for for me, I've always found, yeah, there's never enough time to 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 check out everything you want to do. But yeah, we like at Hub, we always try and sort of like make sure that everybody at least has a couple of hours a day to just go and explore and wander and, and see stuff. Um, I mean, if you're, a, if you're at a show like Essen, you're never going to be able to, to get around everything, but you know, yeah. we do what we always do. We always go stupidly early in the morning. Like we get on like the first trams that we can and just walk around as people are still sort of like setting up for the day. So we can at least say that, Oh yeah, we saw that. And we saw that. And we check out that. So that's all good. Um, uh daniel has mentioned uh things that you don't miss is the uh attention gen attendees god that voice i miss that voice i really do <laughs> the hall will be closing in five in, uh, in minutes, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> i genuinely miss that voice <laughs> it's it, it it you realize i mean the, the voice has been there for the longest longest time and I don't know if I've ever met the person who is the actual voice of Gen Con, but like I, I would like to shake them both warmly by the hand and by the throat just to sort of, <laughs> you know, I'd hug them. to express my love, but also <laughs> you're really loud and in here. Um, I think they're just this I, really tall giant who like shouts down through the like. <laughs> yeah, they don't actually use a microphone at all. It's just sort of like it's Andre the Giant in a in a corner just bellowing. It's sort of like it's a thing down through the air conditioning. <laughs> that works. Uh, Chris Mitchell says I don't miss teardown. Christ, none of us do. Um, yeah. But actually, as a company, as a group, we've got our setups and teardowns pretty good now. I th- I'd say I'd say we're pretty sorted for that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, personally, though, for shows, it's like I, I, yeah, it, it it has been a hot minute since I've actually attended a show as an attendee. Um, I mean, personally, I, I love the perks, the bonuses of going as an exhibitor because you know you get to go in a little bit earlier, you get to see all your friends, you get to work all day, you get to work all day and sleep all night because you're in crippling, agonizing back pain. Um, your experience might vary um but yeah it would be really nice to just go to go to an event just to play stuff and before we came on air i was we were talking about like shows that we've been to and um like i remember going to not the first but the second uk games expo um uk games expo um which was held in for the in this really really tiny masonic lodge on the outskirts of Birmingham, <laughs> and it was that like, was super exciting. yeah, because like, like you'd go upstairs and there were like huge giant oil paintings of previous like lodge leaders holding badges, and it's it's a thing. It's a weird thing, but it's a thing. Um, but you know, it, you could just go for the you could just go for the day because it was up in Birmingham. You know, I was living in Milton Keynes at the time, 
um, and you'd see the whole thing in eight hours. And now it's like eight hours. What's eight hours? Eight hours is nothing, you weaklings. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. I miss conventions. Sleep is not for the weak, Daniel Zayas. Sleep is for the intelligent. Um, yeah. Why would you hold badges? Why would you hold badges? For people? Um, but yeah, I miss I miss shows, and I've been thinking. It's like I. Rory, can I take some time off at some point and go to a show when all this is done and we can just go, we'll just go somewhere and play games. We'll jump in the camper van. Jump in the camper van. <laughs> like I was trying, I was looking at the schedule of shows that are still officially on um, that have not been pulled due to, the, uh, due to the pandemic. And like basically everything up to PAX Unplugged is now gone, yeah. gone, gone, gone. Um, PAX Unplugged may happen, may not happen. It's so long down the line, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, but there's also BerlinCon in Germany, which um, is now going to be happening in December. So mm. I might have put it on my calendar and said, oh, this could be actually pretty good to attend, whether we go as a company, whether we go as uh, just people playing games. Because I think we've got to get at least one show in before the end of the year. That would be nice, a nice thing. Um, Aaron, what about you? Your um, your shows, I know that you are very much in the, the camp of being worked like a dog <laughs> at conventions well so it's interesting because i was saying earlier to um karina that i've never attended a convention as an attendee never ever. never no no because when i even when i wasn't working for a game company i went as a volunteer so i just worked <laughs> all the time no. yeah and then when i did go to my first convention as an official exhibitor that was for Gen Con. So I went from essentially being like, Oh, PAX East is pretty cool to driving a like 26 foot truck full of board games from New Hampshire to, to Gen Con, <laughs> just nonstop pace. <laughs> You're like, I can't believe they haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> essentially. Yeah. <laughs> It's like at that point, Erin um, wasn't actually working for anybody. She just like <laughs> nicked a twenty-six in, uh, twenty-six foot truck. I still don't know. Very small. Good old 2015, 2016. Mm. Uh, the great ball game heist of twenty fifteen. I remember it well. Yes, <laughs> but um, no, that's actually it's going to sound weird, but just hold on because it's not going to get better. Um, the thing that I really miss about conventions is the fact that you show up as a team and you're like, we got to survive. And it always felt like a team building exercise, like a nonstop 150 mile per hour race to the end. <laughs> Where you're like, all right, we're going to go, we're going to set up, we're going to hang out, we're going to drink, we're going to play games, then we're going to wake up early, then we're going to do other things, we're going to sell games. We're going to go, we're going to eat dinner, we're going to play games, then we're going to go drink, then we're going to wake up, and it would just be, yeah, just 100 miles an hour constantly. And for me, that's kind of fun. Yeah, fun. I miss that. <laughs> it is fun. Because, you know, you do are... it with your group, with your yeah. people. Yeah. Um, what, what, are, what are the bad things about conventions? Because into every no, life, hang on. Must fall. Can, come on, let's go. Let's, let's, let's do another no, question. Sorry, no, no, no. Like, there's, there's like, is, is that there is, there's got to be something sort of like that you wish something could be done better. Con crud, I wish that wasn't a thing. Yeah, that's my one. <laughs> uh, when is it? Well, actually, I don't tear down when other people's tear down is chaotic and it becomes chaotic for your tear down. <laughs> Zip ties, zip ties all over the floor when you're trying to get a. Um... Oh god. Uh, when you're trying to get a pallet jack all around, and they and the zip ties get all cabled up in the wheels. Because the zip tie is like the perfect size to get caught in it in the wheel, and so then it goes flying. And as it's like flying slightly through the air towards your feet, you're just going like, "Am I wearing the steel toe boots right now, or am I going to the hospital?" <laughs> That's always the question I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's switch up the question. Uh, Delton's got one, uh, which is, uh, if something like PAX, Origins, or BGG stay up uh, for the fall in the US, would you all consider going to the world, uh, going with the world pandemic situation? If BGG happens, we aren't sure if we're comfortable even planning to go yet, and it's only a four-hour drive. Of course, things may change by that time in the fall. Um, well, Rory, um, as our great leader, you get the final say on this. So, yes, if Officially, well, we, anyone outside of the US would not be attending a con in the US this year. Um, it's not 
our view is it's not safe for us it's not safe for other people and it's just a bigger risk than it's worth taking um as things change if we can work with people within the us who would be local or available to do that con then that's something we'd probably look at yeah. and i'm kind of looking at that in the in the background but yeah i think it's you know it's always that tough call between you know need for financial security um and the health and well-being of yourself and others <clears throat> and i think in that in this case the health and well-being of <laughs> others and yourself is going to have to take yeah. precedence no matter what the financial implications of that might be yeah, so ends the the official diktat no i mean i i i am inclined to agree um yeah. Karina, what they, do you, which what do you think, you know? makes me very sad because i really want to go back to pax implode that's yeah sad. well actually that was that was going to be my follow-up question out of all of the conventions that we we attend whether we go as companies or like ones you've been to yourselves previously what what's overall like a favorite convention if you could pick one of them to go to any time which would it be well i'll let someone else answer first because i've been talking yeah go on erin looks thoughtful <laughs> all worried one of the two i don't know which one don't worry, there's like don't... little, little characters running around her head trying to find the answer Curry, yeah, Curry, I, I left it here somewhere. Go mine is, mine is, and it fits with this week, right? Mine is UK Games Expo by far. Did I not even? I love Essen and I love it with passion, but UK Games Expo is for me so much, um, so much more like home. It generally is because not only do I get to see all my friends, the most of the mm -hmm. ones that I also see at Essen, um, but I get to see. I, I won't lie, like I, I miss the expo guys. Like I can't wait to see them and hug them just like in themselves, just this them. But what's really cool about expo is all the organized play. So in one hall, um, you have all the kind of the, the 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 publishers and the stores and the demo activity, and there's this other hall where we have all the tournaments. So it's not only the games and uh, the people that I also get to see, you know, all the players and the judges, Chris, that, who popped up in the chat a bit earlier. He is an amazing, an amazing human being who not only marshals the um, prize wall, like there's no tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> there we go. But um, uh, yeah, no, it's just, <laughs> yay! <laughs> It's, it's seeing people like Chris uh, and all my friends and getting to hang out and having that kind of dual thing in between the demos and the organized play. We don't have that at Essen as much because Essen used to be my favorite until I moved to the UK and I went to the expo and I'm like, well, this is a different, a completely different world. It's having those both things at the same time that just make it the best thing ever. The absolute best thing ever. There we go. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit mushy, won't I? I'm a bit nostalgic this week. You can be mushy, that's fine. Uh, Erin, do you have a thought? We can come back to you if needs be. Do that. Uh, Rory, sorry. you're up next. <laughs> you, you think way too much about this. Um, no, you're just because I love going to all of them. I think, yeah. I, For me, in terms of the cons that I've attended, which actually I don't think is that huge, um, I think Essen for the mix of people mm -hmm. it's kind of like nuremberg i love when i'm at essen and i'm talking to people from russia and brazil and you know um ukraine france spain like just all over the place and then seeing people of all ages at it as well like families with younger kids i love that aspect of of essen even though it makes the whole crazy on a saturday <laughs> um I just love that kind of the shared experience it creates. I don't, the only other con that is close, I think is UK Games Expo. I think that's really catching up in that kind of really family friendly vibe that Essen has. Um, so I think it would be Essen and UK Games Expo. Again, it, there is an element of that kind of close to home turf. Um, that, and I, I just think, I think UK Games Expo is turning into something really special. Um, so is PAX. I think PAX Implode would be my favorite yeah. US one, just to yeah, caveat I'll that. I'll give Aaron a few minutes because I'll jump in and say, I, for the longest time, I would have said BGG 
um, BGG.com in uh, the autumn because it very much felt like, hey, it's it's the end of the year. You've gone through the whole thing. You've done all of the you've done all the shows. You've traveled halfway around the planet twice over. Um, and BGG felt like a real, it, it, it's very small. It's only a few thousand people and the focus is very much on playing the games, but like all of the new stuff had been released pretty much at Essen. And it was like the first time a lot of people had got to try a lot of these games. Um, and there was just this really sort of like, there's a wonderful sort of like atmosphere and attitude about the place at BGG. Uh, now, obviously, we didn't go last year, and they moved to a new venue with uh, like a slightly larger, with like more hotel spaces and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know if they've managed to keep that up. I would assume so because BGG, as an organizing group, are really pretty good about making sure that the show is fun. Um, but sneaking first place, I think it's it's Pax Unplugged. It is. It, it, it has sort of like jumped in to become like the last show of the year. Um, so I always described it as like conventions are like the world tour. You go and then you, you go and you do all these shows and there's always going to be another one, but there is the, always the end in sight. And BGG was the last one. Now, now PAX Unplugged is the last one. And what would it be the last one? It feels like it's the, it's the after show party after you've done this whole extensive world tour. And this is like the last final blowout. It, it really feels like a celebration of games because it's not just a focused gamer, like gamer audience who attend. It's it feels like a much wider and more open to experimentation uh, group of people who come to Pax Unplugged. Um, plus the fact yeah. that it's so well organized. Um, <laughs> it's just it like it's only been running what three years, and it's huge. And it's wonderful. Yeah, I, I don't think I have a bad word to say about it. I, I think I was thinking about Pax Unplugged and what I like about it. And I think BGG strikes me as like they're the kind of the gamers in the know. Mm -hmm. And so they're kind of watching everything that's coming. And, you know, before it even hits, they know it's what they want and, and what they're looking for. That's my Im impression with Pax Unplugged. It's like people kind of going, or well, I picked up like Dominion or Carcassonne for the first time and I fell in love with gaming and I'm coming to see what's here. And for, for us and a lot of games we're making, we're trying to make games more accessible. So mm -hmm. getting to talk to those players is great. And even, you know, when they're like, oh, they, you know, when they show you your bag, their bag of what they've bought, because they're so excited, like, oh, I just bought this game. And you're like, oh man, that's awesome. Or if you haven't seen that, you should go and check out that booth over there. They've got like an amazing game. And they're so grateful for that kind of a, you know, a sharing of experience as mm. well. And that's the bit I really love, like seeing seeing someone else really enjoying games and the discovery of games and not the jaded, I know everything about games and you can't really surprise me or impress me. Like yeah. I'm kind of done with that. Um, and I much prefer that interaction with those excited players. And I think Essen has its mix of them. Uh -huh. Whereas PAX is very, and I think UK is still heavily on the like discovery side because it's getting bigger numbers. Uh, but PAX for me is there's that element, and also the fact that we get to play till midnight in the open play area <laughs> as well. You know, because you have somewhere to go and meet people. Well. Yeah, Expo that's what that I like about it. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's excellent. Excellent. I've always done that, by the way. So whenever, because I started out at conventions demoing, and whenever I would I would demo a game, and people would be really keen on the game, and I would see them with really big bags, I would ask them to show me everything they bought, mm -hmm. and then I would direct them towards something else that they needed to buy. <laughs> Pretty sure a lot of wallets suffered because of me, but it was just that excitement, exactly what you're saying, that kind of excitement of oh, this and this, and I would be so happy if someone bought something that I didn't know existed and I really wanted, and then I would make sure that somehow I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, yeah and then you find out there's like 10 copies of it a day and it's like no <laughs> that happened to me with Crossmaster arena i think oh okay yeah um actually so yos jumps up in there in the chat saying uh, getting all the small japanese games at sn is always a happy moment i i would that is a big thing for me as well because i am a horrifying hipster when it comes to oh well i've got to see if i can find out what all this cool stuff is um but yeah not just the japanese stuff like um last year when the folks from like reality game uh from uh iraq 
I want to say, Iraq mm. or Iran. I should remember that better. Um, but like, yeah, they showed up and it was like, like it's amazing seeing like people from literally all around the world just rocking up with this one game or two games that they put their hopes and dreams into and just getting to sit down and talk to them like over this shared language that we all have mm -hmm. um is wonderful like yeah last year like talking to folks from brazil talking to folks from like uh, from the middle east it was it was absolutely wonderful oh yeah and also small korean games which is a good thing yeah well um, that's how we found tip over frog <laughs> it's true <laughs> all right erin do you have an answer yeah, we bought I, you as much time as possible. Yeah, you really did. The, I, it's tough because, to be perfectly honest, I'm trapped between Gen Con and PAX Unplugged. And Gen Con, I think there's a huge nostalgia factor for me and the fact that a lot of my friends who are in the industry tend to go there as well. So it's easier to meet up with them after the convention, which is why I love Gen Con. But I think as a convention, PAX Unplugged is, has actually snuck into first place for me as well. Wow. And I think that's because the people at the convention are, um, as someone was saying earlier, they're just so wholesome and happy. <laughs> Everyone there is just like, oh, I want to learn about this new game. How do I play this game? And it's just a fun crowd to interact with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think you're going to find... It's more laid back. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not as intense as Gen Con, which is what I like about Gen Con and even Essen to some degree. But yeah, but it's just it's much more chill. I like it. Yeah, I don't think you're going to find anybody at PAX Unplugged, like, if, if, if somebody wanders up to your booth and you, like, because I do the same thing as you, Karina, I say, hey, so what have you bought? What's in the bag? If only so I can live sort of, like, vicariously through their purchases, yeah. because we've just yeah. been working for, like, the last nine hours on the booth or whatever. Um, not like, I'll give you money already. for that game. Yeah, just, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's like, and they it's open up the bag, and it's like, it, it's a copy of, like, Ticket to Ride, and it's just sort of like, yes, we, we just started playing games. It's just like, you have got so much to look forward to because like the excitement almost builds up even more because it's just sort of like you've just started on this journey of playing games and if you want to pretty much everybody at this booth can recommend 50 amazing things for you to play um if you're just willing to let us jabber at you for for that long um but yeah it's it's lovely i i, I think that's what makes packs unplug for me it's 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 the the mix of people like you said worry like you've got the experienced gamers who you know maybe they weren't able to get a ticket to bgg but they know that a lot of the new sm releases are going to be available at least to play at pax unplugged um but then you've also got like hell you just have people wandering in off the streets with a day pass going well i know that pax is an event that is big and fun and entertaining but i don't know what i'm going to ex expect to see here and then sort of like their eyes widen and go all shiny and it's just sort of like it, it, this is a a whole new world like the old song goes and i just realized and having a place to buy games out of show hours is one of the great oh, things God, we, yeah. don't, we don't get to get to this you know we often don't get to the booths to buy stuff so yeah. mm -hmm. being able to go to i can't remember which store it is um in the open play area where you can actually like pick up that game you've heard everyone talking about that you just couldn't get to is wonderful as well. It is true. So, so I had a, a question. I know we're kind of running low on time. Um, no, all right. What can, con have you not been to that you would like to attend and why? Well, clearly the answer for me needs to be packed some plug because you've been raving about it for <laughs> yeah. the last 20 minutes. Okay. You would really like it in all honesty. Mm. Like, yeah, you could would not lose recommend it. more. You would, ha you would have an absolute ball. It would be amazing. So if Both anyone... Uh, some plugs on my bucket list. I definitely, definitely. I, I really, really, really want to attend it. Especially now, Packs and Plugs, as I said, you've sold it excellently. So mm -hmm. there we go. Okay. Uh, I got one, but I've spoken a lot, so I'll go in a minute. <laughs> uh, Aaron, do you more, need some more time to think? <laughs> No, um, I think the one the one that I haven't gone to that I would like to go to someday would actually be BGG Con. It's the one that I always because I always went from one convention to another, and then BGG would turn up, and I was like, nah, I need a break. Like right at that one spot, I was kind of burnt out, so I always wanted to go to it. I've been told it's essentially like the um, oh, what is it? Not Woodstock, the other big music festival that happened beforehand. 
Glastonbury? Monterey? Monterey? Pop Festival? Uh, uh, I've just been told it's very... Yeah, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I've just been told like it's a really fun to go to if you're already into the hobby and you just kind of want to like sit down and be able to just talk like straight mechanics with people. So part of me is like, I want to go. <laughs> and, and you would have a good time. It's a very, very chill and a lot of fun. Um, so we've had a lot of suggestions in the chat as well. Um, uh, Raymond, of course, said uh, UK Games Expo. Uh, Zayas wants to go to some smaller events in Mexico. I've never been to the Toronto circuit. Uh, Yoss wants to go to PAX. Any PAX would be good. Um, there were rumors of a PAX Europe happening at some point as well. Um, I guess mm. there's still just rumors and buying the sky, but we will see. Uh, Rory, where you would host you it like? in Ireland? Yeah, PAX Ireland. Yes, do it. Have it in like do it Mayo or something. <laughs> Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> What's the word? Um, leash. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, everybody, get it. Your uh, Google Maps and <laughs> search for these counties. Um, <laughs> for me, I think. So our Italian distributor for many years um, would keep asking when I was going to go to Luca. Um, so I would love to go to that because it's set in a medieval town and apparently with cosplay and everything, it's just awesome. Um, but the kind of explorer in me who's always looking for the new and the different, it would probably have to be Tokyo Game Fair. Yeah, that's my one as well. Um, that or actually and Taiwan because I mean, we we mentioned you know discovering games from Japan and Iraq and Korea, but I also think Taiwan and Hong Kong are producing some pretty amazing yeah. games as well. And as a kind of developer publisher, they're the kind of games where you know, and you all know Michael and Aaron. We've a couple of games sitting on shelves that were like, mm, if you could just polish this up a little bit more, it would make for a great game. Um, so I love discovering those kind of gems that just with a bit of polishing can reach a wider audience and they kind of might fall short either because it's a translation thing or just artworks you know being suitable to the audience as well so yeah i love how in japan they work kind of within the restrictions of components and size as well which kind of leads to quite interesting um game ideas mm -hmm. Yeah, Tokyo Game Market is definitely mine as well. Um, they do it twice a year at Tokyo Big Site. Um, and it's tens of thousands of people very politely lining up and checking out hundreds and hundreds of incredibly small run indie games. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think the thing that appeals is A, yeah, it's Japan and I want to go back for the, um, you know, I've wanted to go back for the longest time. Uh, but B, it is just that celebration of creativity and you know it's it's something that we try to do at hub games as well we like we it, it's like hey let's try something different and pray <laughs> to the ludological <laughs> gods that it works yeah. um stop that right yeah. now <laughs> yeah nowhere else are you going to sort of like see a game that is it's it's a real actual sandcastle and you need to try and find treasure hidden inside it mm -hmm. by cutting off bits of sand you know, that's absolutely wild. Um, and then, of course, you have people like uh, the the wonderful and lovely Jordan Draper who attends with uh, his range of, like, tiny, tiny box games. And it's, you know, th th there are people who we know there. There are absolute just creative wildness people there. And, yeah, I don't know, maybe next year, year after, it would be amazing to, to go over and just experience it. Um, again, whether it was a work thing or whether it was just an attendee, it would be uh, an incredible event to hit. Cool. I feel like uh, Karina is passing notes in the back of the class. I, I'm going to yeah. go, Crypto, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I did nothing. Mitchell, nothing. get out of here. <laughs> well, so, well, I think it would be a good time to wrap it up. Um, because we've been at Before this that, can you tell hour. us oh, where yeah. we're going and why we're hurrying? Because I see your T-shirt, like your shirt and everything. Do you want to tell us why we're wrapping up? Because maybe people don't know and want to see it as well, Michael. It could be a cool thing. Yeah, it's be cool, ready. Michael. Be a nerd, Michael. No. Yes, right. we're all nerds. <laughs> yeah, trust me, we're okay. all nerds, everybody. 
In about an hour, right, the reason we're wrapping up is because in about an hour, um, there is a uh, SpaceX launch. Um, I like space a lot. Um, and this is going to be the first crewed launch um, from the United States in 11 years. Um, so it's going to be the uh, Dragon capsule is going to be flying up into space, um, bringing two astronauts to the International Space Station. And I kind of want to basically just go grab a cup of tea, sit down in front of the television for the next two hours and watch the countdown. Because uh, SpaceX is very good at sort of like putting together the, uh, the, 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 the drama of a launch. Um, and I, I, I guarantee you, I am... <laughs> F you, O'Connor. <laughs> I'm not going to space. Um, yeah, I guarantee you there will be a, um, a, a a few tears in my eyes when that rocket goes up because uh, it shows the the best and brightest that people can be. And I don't often have a level of hope for humanity, but well, when space to, things happen, I do. You have to capture that tear into a locket. So That's whenever it. you're feeling down about me. people, Michael, you can like open it and see it like, until no, it evaporates. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> no. and that's just that. I'll freeze it. There you go. We'll work up some sort of like tiny frozen element. Um, Delton has said Mega City Space. One day. Not that I planned anything like that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did do a terrible prototype design for it. It's horrible. You don't want to. It involves very bad gravity systems. Um, all right. We'll be back next week. Next Wednesday. Is that the one where you had them all on like put strings? Yeah. <laughs> on elastic strings. <laughs> <laughs> A floating platform and elastic <laughs> strings. And you had to try and build the buildings on these. Yeah. Bad ideas, folks. Mm -hmm. Bad times for everybody. So after that lovely poignant moment that was ruined by um, Mega City Space, uh, we'll be back next Wednesday, 7 o'clock UK time. Mm -hmm. uh, wherever you've got computers, you know what's going on with time zones. this time, but next week, this time, yes, yeah, mm -hmm. same bad time, Pretty same bad channel, you know, Pretty just much. as uh, just as you would know. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can um, get us on Twitter, we are Hub Games, also, we're on Facebook and Instagram, and hell, we've all got our own accounts and stuff as tell well. You can follow us if you want, yeah. There you go, tell your friends, tell them to uh. Come like the page and be notified when we talk next. Because that's a bit I still haven't got my head around, like how early we can notify people about these talks. Which Karina can answer. But <laughs> Karina she's can't answer because she's coughing her lungs up. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry. Um, basically, what's going to happen is after this, I'm going to make the event for next week. So we're all good. But I'll yeah. have water first. But just Probably I'll put it idea. here in the in the in the uh, comments. After I drink some water and not die, I'm very sorry. <laughs> <Don't die. laughs> Sounds like a plan. And now we're all going to smile at the camera so Karina can also get a, uh, a screenshot as we go. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for watching, and we will see you next week. We love you. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. Bye.